In this video, we're going to cover two different types of curtain walls. The curtain wall one family type, and we're also going to take a look at the exterior glazing and storefront types and how those differ. And we're going to look at two different methods for drawing these curtain walls. The first one, we're going to use walls that are already created, and we're going to go ahead and change those type to be a curtain wall. For the second method, we're going to draw an embedded curtain wall into the wall that you see here and here. To start, I'm going to select the two walls that are at the entrance to our building here, and I'm going to change their type from what they are at generic six inches to curtain wall one. You can see that they change from the generic six inch wall to what is essentially two glass panels. I'm going to go to the default 3D view, and from here we're going to go ahead and draw in our curtain grids. First thing that we need to do is from the architecture tab, we're going to find curtain grid. And I'm going to allow Revit to do the spacing for me. What that means is I'm going to look across the bottom here, and as I move the mouse around, it'll lock in to certain points. And you can see it's already defining one third of the curtain wall panel for me. And I can do the same thing, and it'll split this one in half. For this side, it'll be a little different. I can go in and I can find the center of the panel. And then I can allow it to divide it up into fours. For this side, I'm going to put a door within this panel. So I'm going to adjust the dimension of this curtain wall to be six foot two. Now that I have the vertical curtain grids, I can add the horizontals. Using the same curtain grid tool, all I need to do is just find a point that I like. Preferably, I'll just place it arbitrarily and then change the dimension. I'm doing the same thing across the top. And what's nice is once I have it on one side, it'll, it'll want to lock in to the other side to keep to keep a continuous line. To create the panel for our door, what I'll use is the Add Remove Segments option. So first thing, I'll select a curtain wall, grid, and then pick Add Remove Segments, and select the segment I want to remove. I can do the same thing when creating a curtain grid. Instead of using the All Segments option, which is what we have been using, I can change it to one segment, which will only show one of the segments within here. This grid, I'm going to set to be 8 foot 8 to create the panel for the door. Now that I have all the panels in place, what I could do is I can go in and I can have it, I could use this panel as a door panel. From the type selector, I'll select door, curtain wall, double storefront. And depending on my detail level, we may or may not see the hardware. With all the grids placed, I can start adding the mullions now. I'll start with the corner mullion using the 5x5 five five quad corner. And then I'm going to change from the grid line option to all grid lines, changing it back to the two and a half by five, and adding the mullion to each of our grids. Last thing I have to do here is delete the mullion at the door. And that's how we can manually create a curtain wall using the curtain wall one tool. Our other option is going to be to use the exterior glazing or storefront to add in a curtain wall that's embedded into our exterior wall. To do that, we'll use the same process, starting with wall. And then we'll select either exterior glazing or storefront. 
I'll go with exterior glazing. And what I want to do is I want to go immediately into the type properties by hitting edit type. And I'm going to change the vertical grid and the horizontal grid to none because I don't want those to be automatically drawn in. And if you notice, when we look at the rest of the parameters, you can see vertical and horizontal mullions are set to none. If I change this to storefront, this might be a more desirable option because it's going to draw a lot of the mullions for us. But we would have the same problem with it automatically drawing the vertical and horizontal grids. I'll go ahead and remove those to none. And the important setting we want to make sure is checked is automatically embed. I'll hit OK. And now we're ready to draw our curtain wall. Just like any other wall, we need to make sure our base and top constraint are set correctly. I'm going to draw it from level 1 with the offset of 2 foot 8. And I'm also going to set the top constraint to level 1 as well. And I want my top offset to be 8 foot 8, which will give me a total height of 6 feet. With the top and base constraints set, what I can do now is draw the wall. All I have to do is find the location line within the wall that I would like to draw it on. And I can go in and click the start and draw it along until I get to the end. You can see it automatically embeds the wall. If we look at it in our default 3D view, you can see we now have a curtain wall that's automatically embedded. And from our plan view, I can add my curtain grids at the grid line locations. And you'll notice each time I place one, it drops a mullion in. So I can go back in, and using the same technique we did before, I can add them at the third points between the different grid lines. Once the wall is drawn, I can select it, copy it to clipboard, and I can easily paste it to level 2. To complete my storefront for the south side of the building.